Hey guys, Rebel Engine 95, recording live from the Low County Prison Cell, and uh, yeah, this fight, this is one of the select few I'm going to be able to actually do on list four, and yeah, again, there's not really a lot I want to do at all on list four, like there are some that are pretty much just filler that I'm probably just going to skip over entirely and never do. Uh, there are some I'm probably going to come back to, like, and then there are some that I that I had put down. Um, because of their demand, but then I'm realizing I, like, okay, good example of this. Um, Balrog and TJ Combo. Balrog from Street Fighter, TJ Combo from, from Killer Instinct, right? That, that's not what this episode is, but, um, like, that's better as a one minute melee. And the same goes for one that the official Death Battle Research team put on their, their list. Which is Little Mac versus Rocky Balboa. Okay, that might not be better as a one-minute melee, but, you, you know, I don't want to see Little Mac and Rocky fight to the death. I, I, I want to see them in a boxing match. Like, I don't want to see them beating each other to death. So... I... yeah. It doesn't work. Like, at all to do that so that's just my thoughts on it and unfortunately one of the fights I was gonna do would have been Meta Knight Zero but until I get some indication that that has a chance of becoming a, a death battle I'm not gonna go near that one because it was already a one minute melee and to be honest I think that one probably would have worked better as a death battle than a one minute melee so I mean yeah if that had happened like so if I get an indication that something that happens on, like, that one, the things that happen on One Minute Melee have no effect on what happens in Death Battle, then I'll do that one as an episode. But until then, I, I'm not really going to. But anyway, I've stalled you long enough. This fight today is going to be Demona from Gargoyles versus Evil Lynn from Masters of the Universe. Keep your wallets on you at all times during this fight, because these two are not to be trusted these are the two, probably two of the most treacherous, evil, fucking, I mean, evil is literally in their names, pretty much. Two of the most treacherous, fucking, uh, you know, power-hungry, you know, f fucking warrioresses in cartoon, in cartoons in the last 30, 40 years. That's not really saying much, consider. Well, actually, that is saying much, considering we have people like Azula still running around. Anyway, um, and they're both sorceresses, and there's all that other stuff. But I'd lo I'd love to see that. I mean, okay, Demona doesn't really have much in terms of magic with her at all times. Like a lot of the things she's known for doing, like with her laser rifle. She carries around, like, she's used that same laser, laser rifle over and over. She's used a mace and a shield over and over, but she doesn't carry them around. Maybe the rifle, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, and she carries around some things for magic purposes, but mostly everything she's done out of sorcery has been premeditated. But still, she's a fucking gargoyle. And not only just a gargoyle, even completely discounting her immortality with Macbeth, even if that didn't come into play for Death Battle, because she is immortal unless she kills Macbeth, and by doing so at the same time, she'd be killing herself. Only, or if Macbeth kills her, they, they would both be able to die. But if anybody but Macbeth tries to kill her, she's, she's immortal. Uh, but even if that didn't come into play, she's still a gargoyle that has been alive and kept at the prime of her... Well, okay, not really kept at the prime of her youth, but she's... After the Weird Sisters casted the spell, she's been at the prime of her youth for thousands of... For a thousand years. Almost a thousand years, actually. Well, yeah, sort of a thousand years, I guess. So she's one of the greatest warriors in history, and being a gargoyle... Her skin is naturally hard as stone. Uh, it's not actually made of stone, against common belief. They turn into stone at night, but even when they're, even when they're gargoyles, 
they're not made of stone. Their skin is just as hard as stone. There's still flesh and blood underneath it. Their skin is just rock hard. So, and... Being a warrior that she is, she's used, learned to use everything at her advantage. She's, she uses her claws. She uses her tail. She, she can fly. Or no, she can't fly. She can glide on wind currents. Gargoyles are actually unable to fly. She can only glide on wind currents. But... Again, and she's also an incredibly intelligent and and tricky person, but unlike a lot of like a lot of people in the Gar in the Gargoyles universe, she's susceptible to emotion. She lets her emotions get the better of her. Like she trusted Thalog because she thought it was true love. When really, under any other circumstances, she would have been able to know he was about to betray her. Um. All these things that have, you know, Demona is one, for somebody who was voiced, for somebody who was voiced by a person most known to play a, a, a counselor, she's very treacherous. She does not care for your emotions at all. Then there's Evil Lynn. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention, as a gargoyle, Demona also has superhuman strength and senses and all that other, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And unlike other gargoyles, she turns a human during the day, and as and she's a gargoyle at night as opposed to turning stone during the day. But anyway, bleh. Um, Evil Lynn, uh, pretty much lifelong henchman for for Skeletor. It's, she's a second in command, actually. Um, and probably with the exception of Skeletor. And Hordak. She's probably the third most powerful sorcerer slash sorceress, I guess, in the Masters of the Universe. Universe. Um, and, you know, com generally she uses energy blasts. She can fire these out of her staff for more power, or she can make weaker versions of them out of her hands if she loses the staff. But she will want that staff because that staff carries, like, using dark magic that Skeletor didn't have access to instead of just naturally, she artificially enhanced her magical powers with dark magic as opposed to Skeletor and Hordak who were just, who were trained properly and, and developed their power over year, over the years. She, in a pursuit for power, increased her own magic with dark magic and, you know, now she's one of the more power, now she's one of the most powerful sorceresses, well, she's the most powerful sorceress, but one of the most powerful, I guess, magic users in the Masters of the Universe universe. I'd already made that joke, but whatever. Good enough. It's good enough to use twice. Um, she has been known... She can take an entire stretch of forest and not destroy it or burn it down. She can make it barren. She can take an entire stretch of forest and make it uninhabitable, make it devoid of life completely. She can make meteors fall from the... She can create meteor showers. She can create giant sandstorms. She's able to control people's minds by using her siren song, which is a specific magical ability she has. She can turn herself into a moving shadow so that she she's completely away from the three-dimensional plane. She can't be touched now because she's only part of the two-dimensional plane. And she can just move along solid, sur like, you know, flat surfaces on a whim. Evil Lynn is not someone to mess with in terms of just pure power. She's not a fighter, obviously, like Demona, but in terms of power, holy shit. It, though. So how I think this fight would go. Obviously, we've got two people completely outclassing each other on opposite ends of the spectrum. Evil Lynn is so much more, has so much more magical, like just raw destructive power than Demona. But Demona is, a, is obviously a better combatant. She's a combatant, which automatically makes her better. She's going to be better hand-to-hand, -hand, weapon to weapon obviously uh, has a maneuverability advantage with the ability to glide. 
on wind currents, she has, she has more mobility. Uh, she's faster, stronger, better senses, better reflexes, more durability with her skin. But if she has, basically, but unless she has the laser rifle with her or has some sort of spell she can pull out that she's been able to use without preparation, uh, maybe if they're missing something. I've watched Gargoyle, I've watched the Gargoyle series like three times. It's, it's like my favorite series ever. Uh, so I can't remember any, any spell that she's been able to pull out without preparation, but she is very well known for carrying a laser rifle, so if she has that, that'll give her some sort of distance advantage. Not advantage, but some sort of distance combat. But against Evil Lynn, I don't, I don't think Demona can handle that. Like, okay, you talk about sandstorms. Not a big deal for Demona. Energy Blast. She can fly away from that, and if she has a laser rifle, she can probably counter that. Moving as a shadow, that'll be a pain in the ass, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt Demona. But then you get into destroying entire forests and fucking meteor showers. Yeah, that's not, yeah, Demona's not lasting through that. So I think Evil Lynn would win. Uh, and I, got, I have a treat for you guys because if you liked this because of Gargoyles, the next fight happens to have Gargoyles characters in it also. So getting pumped for that. Anyway, for Blinger95, see ya.